Right, good evening, and thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Logan's European Outlook. It may be time to start thinking about putting the heating on. These are the temperatures expected by the UK MET model tomorrow morning. We've got a little bump in the isobars. High pressure will start to build in through the evening and overnight tonight, settling that uh, fresh, brisk northwesterly wind and shark activity that we've got going at the moment here. And uh, we are likely to see the coldest morning since probably back in April or May for many parts of Northern England, parts of Wales and a large swathe of Scotland as well. Now, we have had locally some frosts even during July and August. Uh, some unofficial weather stations of uh, Highland Weather, for example, reported um, below freezing temperatures July and August. But um, on a more widespread fashion we may see temperatures close to the freezing mark this evening if we can get the winds to really drop off out of the northwest during the overnight period so of course the tropics are alive and kicking continuing to drive the weather pattern but this is the temperature anomaly here for september across europe and it has been a very very warm month indeed this could be one of the warmest septembers believe it or not on record but instead of, um, you know, the call that I had back at the end of August for a warmer, which looks to be the case, but drier September looks as if it's going to be inaccurate. It looks as if we are going to wind up a pretty wet September, actually, when all is said and done. These tropical systems that have either had a direct influence on our weather or indirect has certainly enhanced the rainfall across the UK and Ireland over the last few weeks here. Very dry start to September, of course, and it looked as if the forecast was looking pretty decent. Uh, and, of course, that first 10, 15 days of the month, the temperature just shot through the roof. Even with, you know, slightly cooler than average conditions, now it would take there to be pretty much a cold blast from the Arctic to eradicate the warm anomaly that has been built up over the last... Uh, you know, the first 10 days of the month, really, 10, 15 days of the month, it was outstandingly warm across the board. And that really, um, you know, sets a benchmark, so to speak, for the temperature, uh, mean temperature, uh, the average for the month of, of September overall. So it looks as if it's going to be, at the very least, the top five warmest September on record for the UK when all is said and done. And you can see here the core of the warmth uh, within Europe has been centered over central France, below average, believe it or not, across uh, you know central and western and southern portions of Iberia, which is quite interesting. More or less all of Portugal running below average, parts of uh, Greece below average due to the heavy rainfall associated with Daniel, parts of central Turkey below average as well. It, the Global Weather and Climate Report coming up this Sunday, we're going to be looking at a lot of things. We're going to look at the significant spike in global temperature in recent days and weeks. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail. We're going to look at the El Nino, the Indian Ocean Dipole, of course, that's been declared by the Australians in recent days. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail. What does that mean? We will also look at the trend of hurricane productivity around the planet over the last 20 years. Looks if we've had a decline, believe it or not, in the amount of tropical cyclones worldwide in the last 20 years, which, of course, a lot of mainstream media would not have you, you know, be told that. Um, and there's all, all the extremes that are taking place around the world at the moment. Heat, flooding, etc, etc. Warmest winter on record just going for Australia, for example. We'll look at that in great detail. There will be a bit of work put into the Global Weather Report this upcoming Sunday, as always, and I will show you the details and interests and facts that you will not hear probably elsewhere. Of course, winter has begun in parts of far northern Scandinavia, far the, the very top of Europe, of course. We had uh, record-breaking snowfall amounts of 40 centimetres, by the way, in parts of northern Sweden in recent days. Very interesting stuff as well. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of things going on, of course, at the moment here. The tropics, like I say, are alive and kicking. The NAO, by the way, is firmly negative, which is quite interesting, given the fact that we've had such a, a firmly negative NAO during the summer season. Then we've seen, of course, that during the first 10 to 15 days of September, it went positive. Hence, of course, the negative over the, the Greenland, North Atlantic, with the positive over Western Europe. The heat wave conditions, of course, in response. Then, of course, 
we've seen the tropical cyclones transferring that tropical energy northwards over the North Atlantic here. Then that has built high pressure over the North Atlantic and Greenland and in turn deepened the trough and you know wet conditions over the UK and Ireland here. So a fairly negative, fairly deep negative NAO at this moment in time. We'll look at the correlation between this, the Manjulian oscillation shifting eastwards out of the Indian Ocean into the central portion of the Pacific Ocean. What does negative September's in the NAO correlate to possibly later down the road? Remember, I talked about late season tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic last year. And of course that, you know, coincided with my cold forecast for December and that did of course materialize so we'll look at that in a, a lot more detail coming up you know be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in meteorology if you're interested in the global picture not just the UK Ireland Europe the global picture the global drivers and all the aspects that go into looking at the long range forecast Arctic oscillation which is quite interesting it looks as if it's going slightly positive so it's going against what the NAO is doing. So negative NAO versus a, a, an increasingly positive AO, which of course means more lower pressure over the Arctic, higher pressure further south. Now this might not be overly coincidental when you look at the um, the buildup of pressure. And we'll look at that in just a second here because I've been talking about the tropics most of September, because the, the, the tropics really does, and I've said this in yesterday's video, the tropics really are the primary driver when you've got an amplified Manjulian oscillation, that enhancement of convection versus the sinking, you know, depends on what phase the MJO is in, really dictates the entire northern hemispheric pattern. It is incredible, folks. You can't underestimate how dominant the tropics actually are and driving the engine to global weather and we're going to be looking at that in a lot more detail as we look towards the winter season the ideas and the, the development and the forecast itself the manjulian oscillation the el nino and the indian ocean dipole will be three major drivers and you know that will be the the, the three cruxes in terms of the determination of what type of winter pattern that we see this upcoming winter season so of course the tropics can actually dictate the strength of the polar vortex of course we've got the east qbo don't want to uh, you know drift away too much in today's video but east qbo uh, has frictional effects in the poor um, poor jet stream the westleys of course and also in turn can have increased chance of sudden stratospheric warmings within the polar stratosphere as well so these are all aspects fascinating aspects that we will look at but back to the tropics and of course we do have a system off the southeast united states that looks as if that according to the gfs is going to come ashore probably close to uh, charleston uh, not charleston actually uh, it's up in the north carolina so we're probably talking about the southern portion of the outer banks of north carolina as a 992 tropical storm but what i want to draw your attention to here folks and this is correlating to next week is this piece of energy that breaks off this system as it moves into the Carolinas? You see that split. If we go back to the here now, you can see here this uh, enhanced convection on the northern side of this system here. How it breaks away, which is quite fascinating to see actually, it splits off that circulation and shoots out into the Atlantic. And if we look at the Atlantic view, you can see here there's that system coming into the, 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 the US coast here. There's that northwesterly wind that we've got going at the moment. We've got this little bump in the isobars. There's the chilly morning coming up tomorrow morning. That array of high pressure over the west coast of Ireland through the course of early this morning here. That is slowly building its way in. So we're going to see the winds relax. There's the remnants of Nigel. There's a larger area of a low pressure. I believe that was the rainmaker last weekend over the United States. And what this does is this system picks up Nigel and kind of, you know, draws it into its circulation, becomes an even deeper uh, system itself. Then, of course, what happens is we've got a frontal system associated with that low that will spread its way eastwards across the UK and Ireland during the course of tomorrow. We're going to see a spell of heavy, persistent rain. We could see 100, 150 possibly close to 200 millimeters of rain by the way especially later tomorrow 
Looks as if the mainland of the UK is okay tomorrow. Then as we move into tomorrow night, in the Sunday, we're going to see that frontal system become more activated and then it kind of slow down its eastward progress. The reason why is this system is gathering pace, but as it winds up, you're actually increasing the high pressure system over Iberia, over France and the near continent. What that does is it slows down that progress. That cold front attached to the system wants to push east. But if you're building high pressure further east, then you're going to slow down the eastward progress of that cold front. That's exactly what happens on Sunday. We could see a heck of a lot of rain over parts of Wales, northwest England, southwestern Scotland, and then up through the spine of Scotland during the course of Sunday. Very wet day to come, especially on Sunday, it looks like. But there's that piece of energy breaking off that system as it moves into the United States. As you can see here, it goes across the top of that high center between Bermuda and the Azores. This was highlighted in yesterday's video. And as it showed in yesterday's um, output, you can see here the system racing across the North Atlantic here. Notice here that the jet stream is well deflected to the south here. So we've got this big dip in jet here. But this system kind of looks rather innocuous, but notice here as it moves Tuesday and into Wednesday, it becomes a deepening system over the British Isles. So this is another system that directly impacts the UK and Ireland here. Of course, we're just after seeing Lee make impact in the UK. Now it looks like in the same time frame, Tuesday into Wednesday of next week, we need to watch this space. It may or may not happen. Of course, the models do fluctuate in terms of its output. There is another system um, uh, over the Atlantic here. I can't remember exactly what name that is. I've kind of started to lose count because it's been that active. We've got another feature. We've got another hurricane that looks like over the North Atlantic as well. need to keep an eye on these systems because notice here, by the time we reach the second half of next week, long way out. This is fantasy land. I get that. Just showing you the big picture. But notice here that we ha have a less high pressure over the central and western Atlantic. The congregation of heights is now shifted between the Azores and Iberia. That means that we have an open door to these systems not only recurving over the, the North Atlantic, but also coming over the top of that high and then possibly making an approach at the UK as well. So look at this here. So we've got two deep centres of low pressure between Iceland, Greenland and the UK and Ireland here. One at 9.57, one at 9.49 millibars. Very, very interesting situation. Very active energetic pattern at the moment. When you throw tropical energy into the middle altitude pattern, you've got all sorts of fun and games and a big contrast in the models because the models struggle to you know see... The big picture to see the distribution of heat northwards here but this could be a very interesting situation towards next week and beyond that here but as we go forward here it looks as if high pressure wants to start building in here if we finally look at the 500 millibar uh, upper pattern here this is the anomalies and you can see here before we start running out of time as usual you can see what happens as we go forward here. So if we go back to the here now, there's that deepening trough over the Northeast Atlantic, UK, Ireland, of course, here. This is going back to yesterday. There, of course, is a, the remnants of Nigel that gets caught up with that larger system here. There's that increase in heights as that system merges and becomes a deeper uh upper trough and low level trough of course we're then building heights to the east so you've got that possibility of higher pressure briefly moving in slows down the eastward essentially it slows down the eastward progress of that frontal system then we've got more systems coming in you notice here the model we're backed away from the higher pressure dominating next week here we're in to wet and windy conditions it might not necessarily be cold but certainly wet and windy and stormy conditions there's more systems coming up watch this space as we play eventually through the loop it looks as if we have more systems coming in into the early portion of october but then as we move into october do we see more systems wanting to come into the uk it looks as if that's going to be the case here very complex situation evolving here folks we've had a complex situation uh, up until now here and it looks as if it's going to continue and the models have a large spread in terms of the output 
at 8.50. Run out of time. As always, be sure to like, share and subscribe. Back again.